to know what the Democrats are going to try to do on election day to cheat their way to the White House. I'm sure you've been thinking about it. You've come to the right spot. I'm going to talk about that. I'm also going to talk to you about the core path that Trump needs to get to 270. And we're going to start right now. Hello, my name is Kyle and welcome to the channel. This is The Conservative Take. If this is your first time here, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any future content. Also, if you want to join us along with what we're trying to do, then please click that join button below and find out more. And so in this video, I'm going to talk to you quickly about Trump's most direct, easiest way to get to 270. 270 electoral college votes is what I'm talking about. And what you need is 270 in order to win the presidency. And so what you don't hear a lot or if at all in the mainstream media is the fact that President Trump is the incumbent. So simply his path to 270 is basically when the seats he won before win the states that he won before. It's as simple as that. You've never heard that on the other side because you are hearing that Biden is the incumbent. He's the front runner. He's the one that needs to hold seats and that Trump needs to flip stuff. No, Trump does not need to flip anything. And what I'm going to do right now is show you what the principle of what the strategy for what Trump is trying to do at the very minimum to get to 270 and it's simple. It's called core plus three. And let's talk about that right now. Okay, so here is what core plus three simply means for President Trump. It's basically holding three states that are critical in getting to 270. Those three states right now are Arizona, North Carolina, and Florida. And the one state that he needs to get, which is the plus one, would be either a Minnesota, a Pennsylvania, a Michigan, or a Wisconsin. And this is critical to understand because this is Trump's most simple path to get to 270. Why? Because he already won Arizona, North Carolina, and Florida in 2016. And he's already won Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin in 2016. So he's already done the work. He just has to redo that effort one more time. And he is president again. I'll show it to you in a second because this is what I feel relates to the way the Democrats are going to try to potentially steal the election. And when I say that, I'm saying it in a loose manner, but in a way to drag the election out further. And let's first look at this scenario right now and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the map. Now, this is what I'm going to show you. Everything in red, we're going to give it to Trump and everything in blue, we're going to give it to Biden. Okay. This is the core plus three, the red states right here that are colored in. We feel very confident that he's going to win all of these. So the key comes down to the ones that are a little bit wavery, but the ones that are of the most utter critical nature for his goal to get into 270. This isn't the only way to do it, but this is the easiest because remember of these states of these three plus four that we showed you before Trump has won all of them except for one that being Minnesota. So now let's go ahead and show you a scenario right here. Let's go ahead and give Trump his core, which is what he needs anyway. So right now we're going to give him Arizona. We're going to give him Florida. We're going to give him North Carolina. That's his core. That's his three right here. We had 260 for Trump and 222 for Biden. Trump is 10 away. Well, if the one that would be Minnesota, that's 270 right there. Okay. But that's just barely cutting it. Let's go to Wisconsin again. That's 270 That's 10. And of course, Michigan, which is 16 would be one that would put him at 276. And if you did Pennsylvania, that would obviously put him over because that's worth 20. That would put him at 280. So that's the easiest core for Trump to get to where he needs. If he gets them all, then of course he will be at 316. And, but that is the core. And I'm going to show you why the Democrats are so interested in stopping this and the way they're going to try and do it is through the courts. Let's talk about the recent Supreme court decisions. So simply put, this is what happened recently with the Supreme court. There were some decisions which basically talking about what happens if a vote comes in after the election, what happens? Well, the Supreme court laid down several decisions recently and it affected really three states. Those three states, guess what? You probably can guess them right now. It's going to be Pennsylvania. It's going to be North Carolina and it's going to be Wisconsin. 
and Wisconsin is going to be the key state. And this is why I, I feel this is what the Democrats are going to try to do. Now, let's go we'll start with Pennsylvania. First of all, Pennsylvania had a decision to make. If late ballots were coming in after the election day, what are they going to do? They wanted to count those out multiple days. The GOP pushed back on that and said, no, we don't want that. And the Supreme Court was about to rule on that. They actually did rule, rule on it. But then after Amy Barrett got appointed on the Supreme Court, all of a sudden the Democrats changed heart and said, hey, let's talk about this. How about we take all the votes that happened after Election Day and we put that into a separate room and count those separately? We don't co-mingle that with the main Election Day votes. So all the vote by mail, all the in-person early voting that comes in by Election Day get counted. Anything that comes in after the fact can get looked at later. So they basically agreed that we're going to do that and that's how it's going to roll. And so that's key to remember. All right, the next state is North Carolina. North Carolina made a decision to say, hey, we're going to give ourselves six days after election to count these votes after the fact. And that was pushed back on. But ultimately, that particular decision stayed. OK. And lastly, we have Wisconsin. Wisconsin, same thing as Pennsylvania. They wanted to count those votes after the fact. But then the Supreme Court ruled saying, hey, you have to stop. You have to honor the Election Day votes on November the 3rd. And everything past that cannot be used for the election it must be tossed out why is all this important because ultimately i think what the democrats are simply trying to do and what they're trying to do from the very beginning was to expand the voting on and on and on so they can find more votes find more votes so they can get this election to the point where they can actually win it so they're going to contest pennsylvania they're going to contest north carolina but you know what based on the supreme court ruling they can't contest wisconsin because once election's over that is it. So if you go back to our model, all right, we took off Arizona and Florida and North Carolina and the other cores, and we took off all the plus one possibilities. This is what I think their Democrats have in mind in case some of these states are close. They understand that they have to have a back door and their goal is to extend the election as long as possible so they can go find some votes. This is what I think they're trying to do. And it makes perfect sense once you understand the Supreme Court decisions and why they voluntarily allowed themselves to let Pennsylvania be counted separately. They didn't care as long as they could count them later. That's all they cared about. And this is what I think they're going to try and do. But this is what I think the Republicans can do to stop it. All right. So let's do this first. Let's count in the states that the Democrats likely will get based on the polls we know now. Also, they pretty much are going to concede the fact that Arizona is going to go to Trump, I think, at this point, or they suspect it strongly because he won before, as well as Florida. I think the Democrats think that they're going to win Minnesota. So we'll give them that. So now Trump's at 245, Biden's at 232, neither one are there at 270. So what do you see right here? That we'll give, we'll give the Republicans, we'll give them Michigan as well. Okay. So what does that give us right now? It gives us the fact that we have two of the three core are in Trump's column, Arizona and Florida. Okay. Plus he has Michigan, which he's leading in right now in many, many polls as his plus one. But what is he missing? He's missing his third core, which is North Carolina. And guess what? North Carolina is going to be delayed and delayed and delayed potentially if it's close until who knows, they can find more votes. This happened with Roy Cooper in Durham when he was pretty much behind the governor's race against Pat McCrory he found some votes and ended up winning. And so that is what I think the strategy is, to delay, 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 find some votes, and then come out and win in the end. So Pennsylvania, same thing. They can have those votes come in, and once the election's over, they can get more votes beyond the postmark date of 11-3, and then find more votes. So really, if Pennsylvania and North Carolina are close, you can pretty much toss those aside. That won't be decided for weeks and weeks and weeks beyond. And once you do that, then you realize, well, the cheat game is definitely on. So what's the obvious choice now for Republicans to counter this? Wisconsin. Exactly. If he takes Wisconsin and puts him at 271, he's there. So he didn't do his three core plus one. He did two core and two. And that right now is a really good way for him to counter all this, meaning he can win the election without Pennsylvania and North Carolina, which I do believe will get called at some point later. But this at least election night can give him the opportunity to say, I've been elected. And that 
is what is important. So I think he needs to get Wisconsin. And that to me is going to be the key state in all of this that's going to help secure a second term. So what do you think about my analysis on that? Do you think the Democrats are going to try and do something slick behind the scenes by using those Supreme Court decisions to delay the vote so they can find more votes if they need to if North Carolina and Pennsylvania are close? I think they definitely do. And I think they're smart enough to figure this out. Anyone can figure this out for themselves and see how this is going to play out. And so let me know your thoughts on that. I'd be curious to know what you think. And if you like what we do with this channel, we take culture, TV, movies, and politics and news and filter to you the right way then please click the like and subscribe button and that bell icon to miss any future content. And if you'd like to join us in what we're trying to do, please click that join button below and find out how to do that as well. Tell your friends. We're also trying to reach 10,000 subscribers. We appreciate that as well. And as always, please check out some content that we have right here.